Daddy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to another NASCAR Diecast review. Today we have the 2022 Chris, Christopher Busher, if you will, uh, dual number two win. First time in a long time that I can remember, maybe 2018, maybe 2019, that we had both of the dual wins made in the 164 scale. And this is a really cool paint scheme. If you're thinking this is just the same um, fast at all car for Christopher Busher. No, there's actually some different logos, and I think especially on the hood. So if you're a, uh, a big Busher fan, this could be a great addition to your collection. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it out of the box. Alrighty, folks, we're out of the good old box, and here we go. This is a cool looking paint scheme here, guys. You got you got the chrome numbers going on with it. You got a piece of a decal thing. Gotta love customs. You have kind of like this satin matte finish to this car with an incredible detailed paint scheme. This is awesome, guys. This is awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into this diecast review course. I got this diecast from our friends over there at Circle B Diecast. You can too. You can save on shipping, guys. That promo code down below. So you got Fast and All right there on the hood. You got MCR Safety, which I don't know if it's a doggo or a three headed dragon. I have no idea. Uh, but that's something I don't remember being on the normal Fast and All car. So that's the kind of the cool thing with having primary cars winning the dual race and they actually make them. Because you get alternates. Like this one right here, this is the normal Brad Kozlowski uh, Kohler Generators Ford. However, on the dual win, the number is either larger or smaller. I think it's uh, I think it's actually larger on the dual win. Uh, could be mistaken on that one. We did a review on it. Uh, but my point is, is that it allows the fans to get a little bit of a different uh, variety of smaller logos and different accuracies around the paint scheme. Like this one is going to be significantly more accurate to the real race car. Like, you know, the size of the logos, placements, everything to a T compared to the normal primary. So, uh, in my honest opinion, this might be a better one to have in your collection than the clean version due to the accuracy. So, you get RFK, uh, you get Sunoco, Sunoco, very, very nice. You can see kind of like a, a I wouldn't say a, like a grimy, but you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a dust blend on the front uh, bonnet. Let's go to the left side of the car. Um, I will say the, the, the 17, in, in my honest opinion, is a little too high up. wish it was a little bit further down. Like I, I'm guessing that's just, just how they had it, but it looks a little bit off. I don't know. I love the chrome on it, though, man. I am a sucker for chrome. It looks fantastic. Now, the wheels appear to be painted black, or they're extremely dark gray. I think they are the plastic uh, black, uh, so that looks really nice. you got Chris Busher right there, which is so cool. Dude... I hope they make his Bristol win in the 164 scale. That's going to be so cool because it's going to say Christopher Busher, hopefully. Uh, will it say it on there? I think it will. I don't know. That's like so cool that he won the Bristol night race, man. I'm so happy he still won that. Uh, get Ford, whatever that is. Castrol. Is it number 29? Oh, that's for, um. oh my goodness. Dude, I, I was wondering for a second why they had Kevin Harvick's 29 on there. No, that's for uh, Bob Keselowski, I think. But does that, does that not, from this angle, look like Kevin Harvick's 29? Like, I know it's not the same font, but from that angle, dude, it looks like it because it's a little bit skewed. But, yeah, I remember why they did that now. You got Fastenal, MSA. Um, you got uh, Mac Tools, Simeons, Fifth Third Bank. You have kind of like this octagon kind of a... Uh, you know what it really reminds me of? It reminds me of the, the Covenant vehicles from Halo. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Uh, the Covenant vehicles from Halo, how they have that like octagon texture to it. Really modern stuff. I like that. Uh, Goodyear Cap Series. You have the caboose of the die cast, and check that out. DeWalt. Man, we need DeWalt as a primary back on the 17 car. Get RFK. Get Ford. Get the number 17 once again. Go to the right side of the car. Um, just what a really cool looking paint scheme, man. It is very detailed. It's very modern. But if I could change anything on this paint scheme... I wish they would start the Fast and All logo here and have it go all the way to the side. It's just a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit bland not having nothing here. That's kind of my, my only little uh, pet peeve, if you will, around this paint scheme. Notice the little grill tape, or not grill tape, but the side post marking there, which is a nice touch. Um, the dual races for 2022, in my opinion, were the worst dual races I ever watched, though. I'll be honest with you, nothing happened. I mean, the drivers are so timid and um, I would say conservative on the racetrack. There was a little bit of a park shortage kind of going around, apparently. And the drivers, they were not willing to take risks. Uh, of course, Logano wrecked himself trying to block, which, I mean, who's not trying to block at a plate track? Uh, but 
it, it was boring. Like, it, not boring, but it was just, it was really bad. <laughs> um, the Daytona 500 was amazing, um, but the, the dual races were bad. Like, if I actually paid money to go watch those, I would feel really bad because nothing happened. I mean, it was just a freight train, no one passing, and then they had no cautions, right? So after the pitch strategy, everyone was so strung out. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Um, so hopefully for 2023, there's a little bit more action. Um, I, w- I would love to see some more go or go homers in the, in the, in the dual races. I think that makes the great show. Yeah. Fast and all fast and all not a fan of these double logos. It looks like bumper stickers. You know, it's like, you know, you're just placing logos wherever. Not really a fan of that. Um, you got Busher and you got Norseman drill and tool again, another sponsor I've never seen before. So that's, what's so cool about when these race to win die casts is that you're going to see some um, some smaller sponsors that you've never seen before. That's going to give you some variety. So like if you had the normal primary car of this and you have a die cast series, a stop motion, it gives you two different paint schemes to alternate from. Because yes, this is a raced version. It has a little bit of some markings and whatnot. There's no damage to it. So if you're doing this in a stop motion from this distance, no one's going to be able to tell it, you know, it, it's a raced version besides seeing, oh, that logo's there or that logo's there. So my point is it just gives the fan a little bit more variety, which is really, really cool. Um, like I said, they did this with the, the Brad Kozlowski as well. So you can have the dual set for 2022, which surprisingly, they're making a pile of the 164 raced wins for the year of 22, which is great. I mean... I'm, tr- I'm trying to think what 164 race wins they're not making. They've made the, the Clash, all Daytona Speed Weeks, Kyle Busch, Bristol Dirt. They're probably making all the Chase Elliott ones except for his Pocono win. Um, Kyle Larson, Watkins Glen, Fontana, Bowman Vegas. I mean, it's just like, it's insane how many of them are getting made. Years ago, you might only get like two, maybe three. You'd get like the 500, you'd get the championship car, and then you might get Dale Jr. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it. You would get Dale Jr. <laughs> of 500 or um, the championship card. The fact that we're like getting paint schemes that were ran at like Atlanta is amazing. And I really hope they keep that going. So I encourage you, keep the pre-orders coming in because they would not have been making those cars, guys, if y'all did not pre-order it. So I think that's great for everyone. Keep the pre-orders coming in. Because they are seeing that, and that's why they're making it. So that's great for uh, for the you know the whole collector, uh, well universe, if if you will. I really like this car, guys. You know, there's no damage or nothing going to it, but I just like it because it has the different alternate logos, which to me really spices up a diecast series having that ability. So that's all for now, fellas. Thank you all again for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more NASCAR diecast content. Of course, we have you know more diecast reviews to come on the channel, so stay tuned for that. That's all for now. Diecast Buffet. Signing off.